Welcome to Power World, an awesome creature catching fighting survival game. What if I took away the catching? I'll be attempting the ultimate challenge where power spheres are no longer useful. I can only get powers by finding wild eggs or saving them from the evil camps imprisoning the poor creatures. I'll explain more of the rules and challenges later as we encounter them. My first goal though was to make a character fitting this mighty challenge and that is Ash can't catch him. With my character made, I opened my eyes on a beach, only to be surrounded by some pals who wanted to watch me sleep. I grabbed the broken iPad nearby, then made sure to change the keybind for throwing pal spheres, just to prevent any accident. Turning around, there was a chest nearby that I collected, giving me some coins, some bread, and a mega sphere. I won't be needing that. Grabbing the second chest, I ran back up the stone steps to enter wind-swept hills. I activated the fast travel station as these are dotted all across the island, allowing you to fast travel between them. I was then having a chat with the local enjoying her stew, and she gave me some wood to start my adventure, before running down the hill, grabbing a bunch of berry bushes as I would need them for food. As I just kept making my way down the path collecting sticks and stones, a chest and more berry bushes until I came over a ridge to find my first egg, a damp egg. But this egg wasn't helpful yet, as in order to hatch this egg you need an egg incubator. You can't just throw it in front of some campfires in hopes of hatching it. But to unlock the egg incubator, you need an ancient technology point. You can get these points by defeating alpha bosses found around the map. Without being able to capture any piles, this challenge was going to be difficult. So let's keep moving. I jumped across the ledge to collect the Lift Monk Effigy, which is usually used to increase your capture power. So it was useless to me. I also grabbed the skill fruit as these can be fed to your pals in order to teach them new abilities. These are very useful. I just have to get some pals somehow. So I made my way continuing down towards the plains, even walking past the dancer of the plains. Chill it. This is an alpha pal. Something I have to beat in order to unlock ancient technology so I can unlock the egg incubator. I found some syndicates getting wrecked by a deer and another chest which gave me some gold, arrows and a copper key. And these keys can be used to unlock rarer and more useful chests. But I kept myself moving forwards to activate the next fast travel statue and collected the nearby damp egg as this is where I plan to set up my base. For now anyway, I'll make a new base later on. Before building myself a primitive workbench so I can make a pickaxe, an axe and a torch. I unlocked the bow, arrows, bed, structures and cloth then started to set up a small 2x2 two two wooden house. Hopefully no Toko Toko show up again. Then turn to craft myself my first bow. It wouldn't be great damage, but it's better than nothing. I also spent way too long crafting up arrows, then headed out at night as I needed to start unaliving some paths for experience and resources. Starting with this cremus I beat over the head with a torch, so I could get the wool I needed then headed home, to get a tad more wood and made myself a bed to sleep through the night to end off the day. In the morning, there was a pair of Hukrates I opened fire on with my bow as I backflipped out of the way of their air attacks to defeat them, leveling myself up to level 5. I had a long way to go as usually the best way to gain experience in Power World is by capturing pals. I obviously can't do that, but I have a plan to gain a lot of experience later on in this video. I crafted up some cloth to fasten into a normal parachute, which allows you to glide short distances, then turn to fire at the Pengalat, who I defeated for his ice organs and power fluids. I would need these for some upgrades later. I then turned to take out a couple cremas for their wool, and then took a rock for its stone. With all these resources, I set up the Pal Box. This is essentially the PC from Pokemon and the central hub for any base in Pal World. We'll be using this later once we start getting some actual pals, as I just can't capture the ones I want. I expanded a small platform next to my house where I set up some chests to dump off all of my gear, so I could continue venturing out as I desperately needed a lot of experience. So I began to fight this fox pox for their fire organs, something I planned to use once I got home as well as more cremas for their wool. Before reenacting Lion King as I smacked this fox pox off a cliff, into the herd of rampaging tea fans. So I jumped off myself using the newly made glider to gently lower me to the ground and collect another chest. And there was also a cave here, but being out of arrows, 
I was not going in there yet. At home, I had someone waiting for me, and that was the Wandering Trader. A character I had very little interaction with in my previous 100 days, but they show up randomly boasting a variety of useful treasures for your purchase. I bought a Gamos cap, something I didn't have the resources for to make, so I'll end up building it later. So I instead spent the rest of the day harvesting wood to begin crafting up the Firebow, a much needed upgrade. I'd lay my head down to sleep for the night. With the start of day 3, I had a shiny new bow but no arrows. So for that I mined up more stone as I was going to need a lot of arrows in order to beat my first alpha for the egg incubator. I needed to start building an army of pals and I also made a shield for that extra defense before spending far too long crafting up the fire arrows as well as a cloth outfit. With my fresh new upgrades I turned to draw my bow and fired at the Hoofrates, shot after shot dodging the dark blast to defeat the philosophical owl. I then laid my eyes on the walking tree sap, a Gamos who fell to my arrows too. I was going to have to continue to fight as many paths as I could for experience, only to accidentally hit the Mammarist sleeping behind the Malpaka. It fortunately was just out of range, so it gave up on coming to destroy my entire base. So I then finished off a new Malpaka with some pro dodging skills. But with that, it was pretty late, so climbed into bed where I peacefully dreamt of you hitting the subscribe button to help me get to 200,000 subscribers. And as the sun was rising, half my armor and tools were broken. So I set up a repair bench to fix it all up, then with my fresh tools took out some of the local population like the Kativa and Kremis that were nearby. Farming them for experience to see I was now a high enough level for the egg incubator. The structure was going to be my saving grace, as even though I couldn't catch any piles, I was able to hatch the eggs for piles. I just first had to defeat a boss. So I made a bunch of arrows, but inevitably got bored of crafting, and I wanted a pile, and I wanted one now. Fortunately, I had the perfect idea on how to get one. So I ran all the way towards the Rain Syndicate Tower. The first of many bosses I would fight later, but I wasn't here for that. I moved straight past to my very first syndicate stronghold. These evil henchmen have the poor pals trapped and defenseless. So after I killed the thugs around the stronghold, I broke open the lock of the cage to free my very first pal, a Sparkit, who I named Sparky. With Sparky in tow, I began to head home as a fox pox corpse fell from the sky. Grabbing the syndicate tower for his travel point and taking aim at the alive fox pox, Sparky helped me take them down to earn us some more experience, even zapping some chickens before continuing the track home. As Sparky was about to be an incredible help for me, since as quickly as I arrived home, Sparky got to work, beginning to craft my arrows for me. But it was getting late and Sparky passed out on the floor. Guess I needed to make him a bed, as in Power World your pals each have a sanity meter. If that sanity meter depletes to zero, your pals may die or turn feral and attack you. So I then repaired my axe at the end of the day to continue chopping some more wood. And on day 5 I had a look at what work Sparky was able to do. As different pals are each suited to do different work. Sparky, for example, had the handiwork, transporting and generating electricity skills. So he could help me build things, carry stuff around my base and eventually power it when we get to the industrial age later on. But this was just what he could do, so I would have to find even more pals to free to support the rest of the work around the base. I set up a feed box which is like a trough for the pals as well as a campfire to cook up a decent assortment of food. Later on I can hopefully get myself a fire pile to handle all the cooking for me. After my chickpea, eggs and berries had all finished cooking, I realized I would need a much more sustainable food source. So I set up some raised foundations for my berry plantations before seeding and watering them so they would grow. Very menial tasks, but with my challenge of not capturing any piles, I would be forced to do these myself until I can free or hatch a pile able to do them for me. So I grabbed my arrows that Sparky had made and headed out, collecting myself a large common egg. With the egg in hand, I got to where the raid camp had been to see it was now gone. Guess they felt embarrassed losing to a guy with an axe. So I continued my adventure finding a fantastic spot with a bunch of ore nodes. 
as this was next to the desolate church, which housed a shrine of power. Yeah, you could sacrifice those Liftmonk effigies to increase your capture power. Something completely useless for me. But the spot was also a nice vantage point, allowing me to see some smoke billowing into the sky in the distance, indicating the existence of what may be another raid camp. I dropped down using my parachute to slow my fall in order to keep moving forwards, climbing up over rocks, only to find a mammarist had wrecked a couple of syndicate thugs here. Guess they underestimated it, but I could see two plumes of smoke in the distance, one of which was pretty close, and dropping down to learn this was the small settlement. A small human village with some PIDF guards, a wandering merchant and most useful to me, a PAL merchant. This trader sells PALs and may be the way I can get rid of this tutorial you see in the top right hand side. You may have noticed it says I have captured one PAL, but that was just sparky as the game counts freeing piles or hatching them from eggs as capturing them. In my definition, that doesn't quite fit, but I don't mind. I had to keep moving through running up some stairs where a group of thugs were waiting to ambush me as I started getting closer to the syndicate thug campsite at the end of this bridge. I advanced forwards with my bow, equipping spotting the first thug and pulling to fire my first shot. I began to fire shot after shot as I hid behind their own barricade eventually taking them all out. Guess they shouldn't have brought guns to a bow fight. This gave me the freedom to release the poor Dazzy into my possession. The floating cloud chose to stick with my team, increasing my captured piles by two. So I named him Dazzle, and with Dazzle and my team, we did find another cave, but it again just seemed too daunting to take on now. Instead, finding another raid camp, and this one was taken down as quickly as the previous so I could free the Rabunny locked inside, who I gave the name of Lola Bunny. But it started to get really dark, so I found the nearest fast travel point, allowing me to teleport home so I could lay down to sleep for the night. I decided to have a look to see what I needed to make Dazzy's necklace, which is a piece of PAL equipment. See, some PALs have an equipment which would unlock a unique ability for that PAL. Like say a Malpaka can get a saddle which allows you to ride on its back. But for Dazzy's necklace, I wasn't even close to level 22 I needed for it. So I put away all my piles for safety as I had a dangerous plan. And since in this playthrough, if I die, so do all of my piles, I didn't want to take the risk right now. As I fast traveled back to where I had ended my journey yesterday, the bamboo grows. I needed to find a boss that I could easily kill. Running through the area, I did find a large electric egg and a floppy getting wrecked by some dire halves that I tried to snipe for the experience, and more syndicate thugs who I did snipe for experience, even if I finished them off with my axe to save some arrows. As I then came up to the ledge spotting a very large Gamos, the Alpha variant. If I can defeat this Alpha, it would give me the ancient technology I need to unlock the egg incubator. So I drew back my bow and fired, taking shot after shot, igniting the sap boy in flames. Even the syndicate thug was helping only for me to run out of arrows. The sap retreated since I stopped attacking as I had to dodge a wolf trying to kill me. But with no bow and knowing fire was my best option, I began to swing my torch in an attempt to set it ablaze. But being so close and running out of stamina made me unable to dodge its hits when its root attack got me causing me to retreat. I needed to repair my equipment and maybe make some more arrows when I spotted a stronghold. If I got the pal inside, that may be enough to finish off the Gamos. But it was full of thugs who opened fire on me with assault rifles as I escaped. I led them away from the camp only to see the Gamos had fully healed, ending the day. Using an ore node to hide behind, I managed to take out the syndicate gunner while he was reloading, truly showing why I don't bring guns to an axe fight, before spending some time mining stone and chopping wood to build up a repair bench to repair my equipment only to be short of the wool I needed for cloth to repair my armor. So I kept moving as I spotted an opportunity. All the thugs had left the camp, allowing me to sneak in and free the Rabunny locked inside. Together we took out the thugs, saving this lamb ball. With the lamb ball's wool, I made up some cloth for my armor, but if I wanted to fight the Gamos again, I needed more arrows. For those, I needed fire organs. And I did find a boss's dungeon, which I definitely would not be doing now, but I will later. 
and the ruby which I was able to take out for its organs. I had to name my Rabunny it, so I named her Lulu. And that's when I came across the stuck Mamoris. I did a test hit to see how much damage I would do, but only dealing one, it wasn't worth attempting, as nearby was another PAL merchant. But the Mammoth never forgot, launching a power attack at me, narrowly missing as it exploded on the cart. Knowing it couldn't hit me here, I hid behind the merchant to keep trading, only to spot the Mammoth escaped its watery prison as I was forced to run away to prevent dying. I really didn't want to lose Lulu. The Mammoth did lose interest allowing me to properly view this merchant's piles and I have to say, I was pretty tempted to buy the Kativa, but decided to save my gold for something I actually needed. But darkness had begun to fall so I took out some cremas for their wool while they were sleeping, before checking what I needed next for more arrows. So mining up even more stone and chopping down even more trees before committing to the laborious grind of crafting 75 fire arrows. At least Lulu helped speed it all up. So arrows in my quiver I began to move forwards finding a giant cat mop. This was the alpha sweeper. Something that was weak to fire damage. Climbing up the cliffside so that I would have the high ground I called back my rebunny so I could draw back my bow and fired. It began to run back to make its way around to get to me, so I pushed forwards causing it to turn back. I had found the perfect spot to prevent it attacking, but I had to keep firing. I did get frozen once as its sweet minions managed to hit me, so I used some non-existent Fortnite skills to build a small wall to hide behind as I kept setting it ablaze. Shot after shot went into the mop, finally killing my first alpha pal giving me the ancient technology point I needed. My Lulu took out the remaining Sui so I could collect the ancient civilization parts before making my way downtown to head home, where I could freely unlock the egg incubator. With no way to capture piles in this challenge, this incubator was going to be my lifeline, so I crafted up some cloth to place it down only for that to set off a raid. Syndicate thugs were coming to attack my base, and I walked to where they would arrive, drawing my bow and firing. They stood no chance versus my fire arrows as I took them out one by one. With the patrol cleared, I knew that stronger raids would come to siege me as time went on, so eventually I would need to build up a proper base and defenses. For now though, I was happy to place in my first egg for it to start getting ready to hatch. I set up a couple arrows for my pals to craft while I went off to fight some depresso for the experience defeating them without casualty and turned to the Gamos who actually dropped some Gamos leaf when I killed it. That leaf reminded me of the hat I bought from the merchant. I then found another chest where I got some useless spheres and gold before collecting two common eggs and another damp egg, which is when I was told of another rule to add to my challenge. I was only allowed to hatch a maximum of one egg per day to prevent amassing a horde of owls. Great. To hatching the damp egg I had incubating into a celery and this floating flappy plane can work as a glider if you make its equipment. So I named it flappy only for a horde of starving wild pals to show up, a group of Lee's punk and some dark lizards that I defeated using my bow. There were also some more gamos I took out for their leaves then set my pals to make up a couple more beds now that I was getting quite a little mass of pals. I also got them to set up the pile gear workbench for when I want to start making the pile equipment only to see our food stocks had begun to run low. So that meant I was back to seeding my berry plantations while Flappy was able to water them. It is great getting the piles to do your work for you. Hopefully I can free or hatch one that will seed things later. So with nothing else to do today I made up my Gamos cap, a small brown beanie with some leaves on it. I thought it was pretty cute. It even offered some good stats for what it was. With it starting to get dark on the end of day 10, I chopped down a tree with what little light I had, while all my pals lay down in their beds, so I decided to do the same for the day to come to an end. With the day starting, I hatched up my rocky egg, giving me a hangu. This floating ball with a pair of arms would make a great crafter. I then spent some time harvesting up more stone to make a third berry plantation. As well as expanded out my platform a bit, I did have to destroy a rock that was in the way first, 
making sure they all face in the correct direction, and even set up some storage next to the plantation, and a few mounted lights to ensure I always could see. Then I headed into my small home to start building a three shot bow, a bow which powerfully fires three arrows at once. I did have to make up a bunch of arrows for it, taking up most of the afternoon, though I did make sure to grab the chest nearby my base that had since respawned. Hatching another common egg in the morning, I got a dire howl. This wolf is the first pile I got that I can actually ride. So I was super excited when I got this. I then named the Hangu Armsy before naming the dire howl after my own real life dog, Pixel. You can see pictures of on Twitter and other socials, links in the description. But in order to ride on the back of Pixel, I first had to craft myself a saddle before mounting her ready to take on the world. We went on a murderous rampage, killing some fox pox, Kativa, and Kremis. Stopping by the skill tree to pick up some more fruit, before continuing the experience grind defeating some Tansy, Rubies, Kativa, Chickapea, and Lambles. It was a great effort to farm for the experience I needed, and there were some syndicate thugs I found who I removed from the island, as they were trying to stop me from collecting this electric egg and a chest. I kept fighting what I could, taking out some sleeping syndicate thugs, collecting chests when I found a wagon with some traveling merchants as the day came to an end. It turned out there were so many thugs around as I found their camp in the morning of day 13, defeating them all so I could free the little lift monk they had trapped in their camp, who I gave the appropriate name of Leafy. So now I finally had a pile that could plant my crops for me. Awesome! I love having sl I love having unpaid workers! But my journey had to keep moving as I found another cave. This time I chose to actually enter and this place was absolutely infested with syndicate thugs. But riding on Pixel we began to dash straight through all of them. Collecting the chests hidden inside and defeating the remaining thugs. Until finally I arrived at the final chambers where there was an alpha dinosaur, The guardian of blossoming gardens. Drawing my bow I opened fire on the dinosaur only for its tail slam to narrowly miss. So I chose to make use of its size as I got it stuck in the hallway. Where I could begin to pepper it with arrows while dodging its attacks. Most of them anyway. Shot after shot into its head until finally it ceased to live. So I shoved its body off the path to get to the loot hidden at the end. I got some thermal underwear, rubies and a technical manual. This manual gives you an extra technology point to unlock more engrams. But I needed to find where all those thugs came from, only to find it right outside. So I charged in on Pixel to take out the guards, giving me the opportunity to free the Swee trapped in their cage. I named it Moppy before turning to take out one of the thugs who had gotten himself stuck. With the camp in ruins, I started my journey home where I did come across a rare. Now every power in this game has a chance to spawn as a rare with stronger attacks, stats and work speed but I'm not allowed to capture them. So I'll just continue to cry as I run past them every time. With slightly wet cheeks, I arrived home to do some more chopping to get my frustrations out, then headed back to the small settlement. I sold all my jewels and rare resources there for a large sum of gold to hopefully be able to afford the piles I need later on, then unlock the next step in my progression, the primitive furnace. I just had one problem. I didn't have any fire piles. The furnace can only be run if you have a fire pile to heat it and smelt the ingots. But once more it was hitting more trees. Then set up some more boxes for more storage. More trees. Hatching another egg giving me another celery. It's always great to get duplicates I guess. Even more trees were cut down completely so I guess I was out of trees for now. Then set up a statue of power and a training dummy. Just in case any of the piles needed the motivation to keep working hard. After finishing my statue in the morning, I thought the motivational training dummy was more important to finish first, but this statue will allow me to imbue my piles with pile souls, increasing their power levels. I then named my second celery Snappy and ended up hatching out a Malpaka. Since I needed a fire pile to cook up ingots, I threw my scorching egg into the incubator while I worked away harvesting more stone and I needed the stone in order to set up a logging site and a stone pit. These two structures can be key for any base as they allow your piles to harvest an infinite amount of stone and wood. I just didn't have any mining piles. 
I set up some more storage next to them before grabbing the arrows my pals had made as I was preparing to soon take down the first tower. But before I get there, I stop by the small settlement again where I bought two new pals, a Rashor and a Loop Moon. They are both super useful early on if you can get them. My Rashor, then I named Piggy Lou, has the mining skill, so it is able to harvest stone and metal. While the Loop Moon, who I named Loopy Doopy, has a level 2 handiwork skill, so she is great at crafting things for me. So I made sure to assign Piggy Lou, Loopy, and Leafy to my base, then climbed into bed, sleeping through the night. I saw my Piggy Lou already starting to work in the morning, so this is exactly why I wanted one, and headed to my incubator, hatching myself an Arsox, my first firepower. I named it Flamio, then assigned it to work at the base so I'd have a power to cook all my food and smelt down my ingots. With it getting a bit late in the day, I did do some XP farming with Pixel, but had to head home as I had forgotten to name my Malpaka. So I named it Carl, a true classic. Then made my way to Rain Syndicate Tower. I was feeling so nervous, as I knew if I die, I lose all all of my pals in my team. So I didn't feel ready yet, but I planned to defeat it before day 20. So I wanted to be ready. For that though, I wanted better food. So I started hunting down dozens of lamb balls, grabbing all of their mutton, and even some chicken was collected until I ran across a cave that I entered. Running through it on Pixel, we took out multiple syndicate thugs that were infesting the cave. Getting to the end to find an alpha tansy, so with my bow I began to damage the monkey as best as I could but Pixel started to take too much damage as I switched to Moppy and finished off the primate. There was another minion still attacking me that I had to deal with, but doing so allowed me to exit the room grabbing the loot chest at the end. But as I left the cave there were more syndicates waiting to ambush me, except a Mamorist didn't like them either and took them out. That's when I came across an abandoned mineshaft. Hidden at the bottom was a black marketeer. These are really bad dudes. They buy and sell illegal pals that are usually quite rare. I bought a Lunaris from him that I chose to name Muti. What? I was saving it from the hands of an illegal pal trader. I thought it was pretty noble of me. With the sun rising, the day was finally here. I climbed onto Pixel as I rode out my base, riding towards Rain Syndicate Tower. The long path up was daunting, but I finally arrived and entered the doors to find Zoe and Grisbolt waiting for me, ready to fight. I threw out Pixel as it opened with a burst of lightning shots, so I let loose with a fire arrow. The fight was on. 10 minutes, 30,000 health, let's do this. Zoe was charging up a laser, so I pulled back Pixel to dodge their block, continuing to fire arrow after arrow as they zap Pixel with electricity. I had to dodge out of the way before swapping in Moppy who fired ice bolts freezing them in place for a second. I kept firing my 3 shot bow then sent in Carl whose charge attack dealt some good damage only for an electric bolt to hit me zapping my entire shield. 2 minutes had passed before I brought Pixel back out. Their mud fling attack dealt some great damage but Zoe started charging again as I sent Moppy back out. I switched back to my fire bow to try and set them ablaze. It was truly a song of ice and fire as I brought them below half health, only for them to dive straight at me stunning me, before turning to draw up their laser as I dived out of the way. So I continued to fire arrow after arrow, shot after shot, 5 minutes were gone and things were looking good. I just had to not die as it kept zapping at a rapid rate. Zoe's health was dropping fast but I had to keep working as the health got below 3000, 2000. But we kept firing until one final shot from Pixel eliminated Zoe and Grisbolt. I made sure to give Pixel a good scratch on the head in celebration and leaped off the edge to journey home. Once there I relaxed by hatching an egg which gave me a grin tail that I named Cheshire Cat. Then did a bit of building expanding my house foundations to set up a crusher which can convert wood into fiber and stone into pallium but I wanted to set up some forges. So to do that, I needed more fire organs. I took them with paws from the fox pox that I found around the plane. And once I got back, I set up the forges so my flamio could smelt any ingots I would end up needing before heading off on Pixel to clear out another cave, making it all the way to the celery alpha at the end that I brought down with my bow and Moppy my sweet. Moppy's ice attacks were truly devastating. 
I got an attack pendant, which I tested by firing my bow at a Nightwing stuck behind a pillar. But it really didn't seem to increase damage much. And that's when I got a notice that a bandwagon of fangirls were coming to raid me. As a duo of Lavanders showed up. Ah, uh, these Lavanders are the weirdest pals ever. And I did not want them to ruin my base as I opened fire. It took a couple arrows but brought them down and even disposed of the body into the ocean. The rest of the day was then spent crafting some cloth as a bunch of pals randomly decided to attack my base. But my fault they got in the way of my arrows. But with all that cleared up, I had my socks smelt down a bunch of ingots while I had a look at my map in order to plan my next move. I needed to find the next tower, so tomorrow I would have to start my adventure and see what I could find. I had another raid attacking in the morning, and at this point they just felt like a gold ammo and power sphere delivery system. So with that dealt with, I hatched myself a Rayhound, who I chose to name Zippy, only to then see I wasn't close to anywhere being a high enough level for the saddle. So I was going to be doing a lot of massacring over the next few days, and Pixel was great at killing off the wildlife. I did stop by the merchant again to sell the loot I could, including all the power spheres, then set off on Pixel in search of more eggs, running far along the cliffs, the beaches, and the rocky shores. Finding a couple eggs and even another raid camp where I managed to free a Jolt Hog Crisp, a small icy spiky boy. I then came across another pile merchant who actually had a lamb ball for sale. Who knows, maybe I might actually be able to complete the tutorial. But I needed to find more lamb balls for sale while I worked towards it. I did grab some more skilled tree fruit then kept moving deeper into new terrain where I saw another raid camp but I was not ready. As the syndicate thug turned up the heat blasting us with a flamethrower. Pixel was taking so much damage so I desperately tried to get away barely escaping as I sucked Pixel back into her sphere to save her life. I managed to escape the thugs before jumping back onto Pixel to keep moving. Jumping up cliffs as I moved forwards and there was another camp. So this one I was going to take much slower as I blasted air and dirt bolt like a wizard in RuneScape. Things were going great. But then I got too close as the thug blasted Pixel with their assault rifle killing her all. I was distraught. It might seem silly, but I was genuinely saddened by this. Not only was this my first pal lost, but they were my actual pup's namesake. This hurt, as with my rules, I have to butcher any pal that faints, and that was going to suck. I took my revenge versus the thug who had taken her life, but I just wanted to get home. Dodging some Van Worms fire blasts as I ran back towards a fast travel point, and I found a large dark egg. While I was running, finally getting to the travel point so I could head home, we had to craft a meat cleaver. I had to place Pixel into the pile box so they would no longer be fainted in order to do the deed of butchering her. But I couldn't think of that now. I tried to distract myself by setting up a hot spring, then hatched up a serpent as the day was ending. I named the serpent Snacky Breaky in the morning when Pixel was almost ready, throwing her out yeah. so I could give her one last meal to keep her happy, before being forced to bring down my meat cleaver, taking her life permanently. This game is brutal. I didn't want this cleaver to exist anymore, so I disposed of it and then made sure to go hug my pup properly in real life. Never name your in-game pets after your real ones if they have a chance to die. I named the second Dire Howl I got Woofles, as I didn't plan on making the same mistake of naming my pals after my actual pet. But this day just sucked, so I went and lay down for the rest of the day. I didn't want to relive the pain of losing another Dire Howl, so I made a saddle for my Arsox Flamey Oath and headed out, massacring everything I could, trying to farm what I could for experience, even realizing the biggest source of experience would be Zoe and Grisbolt as I entered their tower once more. The fight was still tough as I fired arrow after arrow while my pal sent spell after spell until finally one final shot defeated their team once again. Then got home where I gave my pal some attention to try and keep them motivated. And with the loss of pixel I needed to level up my new Mount Flamio. So I headed out running along to the Alpha Gamos. It was a quick and easy fight thanks to Flamio's fire damage burning through his health bar. 
but I kept moving where I did find a massive herd of fox bark. I wanted the fire organs for more arrows, so I killed them off one by one with Moppy dealing some real good damage versus them. But I was heading towards the next alpha, the Winds of Spring Alpha Broncherry. Only for it to somehow scale the cliff I was on, scaring me off. As something to note, I still don't have a flyer. Since I can't just go out and decide to capture one, I kind of just had to hope to get one from an egg. So I hatched another at home and instead getting a Toko Toko. Now these explosive chickens are incredibly powerful. Once you remove their self-destruct ability anyway. So I don't lose it immediately. But I made up some gloves to hold it and shot explosive eggs out of it at anything nearby. I then found another egg high on a cliff and a wandering merchant but he had nothing useful to sell. I spent the next morning blasting pen gullets with my Toko Toko who I had named Bro Bro before mining up the nearest ore node to my base as I was going to need a lot of ingots later on. So many in fact that I planned to set up a mining base once I could have a second base. I just had to level up my power box to unlock that. So while waiting for Flamio to smelt my ingots, I got another raid from some wild piles and Bro Bro just exploded all over them and even a wild crevice that I couldn't even see. With some of the ingots I upgraded my pickaxe before heading out to the church to mine up an absolute truckload of ingots to the point of being over encumbered. And with all the ore in my pockets I started to shuffle slowly back to the fast travel point as I didn't yet have the grappling gun. Throwing all the ore into the furnace to smelt into ingots while I hatched myself a gale claw that I chose to name Criara. As in case you haven't picked up by now, but I do like RuneScape. I then wanted to level up my pile box so I was forced to make a useless structure, the sphere workbench, as well as a cooler box which wasn't exactly useful either, as I had no ice piles. But leveling up my box meant I could destroy them again, then settle. Climbing up cliffs, running across plains, trudging through swamps in search of a good second base location. I did find a free Pals Alliance camp in the morning and these guys are tough. But I carefully and methodically began to melt their faces off, pierce their armor with arrows and bomb their camp with chicken eggs. Finally clearing them all out so I could free the pal in their base. A little tea fant. So much for the free pal Alliance. I then continued my explorations finding a huge rocky egg, the biggest egg I had found yet. But it was getting dangerous so headed home with the fast travel where I was able to hatch another R socks and threw my huge egg into the incubator. It was going to take a while. I then had a look at the stats and skills of my new R socks to see which is better as in PAL world the PALs all have different skills which you can get. And these skills do a variety of things like more damage, more speed, less food drain and even some negative ones like less work speed or less defense. It's actually a really cool system. So usually it's worthwhile to capture a ton of the same pile for the best chances. I don't have that luxury in my challenge, since I'm not allowed to capture anything. So I kept on my adventure finding a Grey Panda, some bee gods and more of the free pile alliance. But I finally entered the frost bound mountains. But traversing this terrain was going to be rough with no flyer. As I kept climbing through I did find another scorching egg, so I kept going when I did find another boss dungeon. I wasn't going in there, at least not right now. So as I continued to climb, glide and run across the hills, I finally found a spot that I thought may be good as there was a couple ore nodes and a beautiful lake. But I wasn't convinced just yet as the day came to an end. I found a black rock in the morning that turned out to be coal. Too bad there are no ore nodes nearby that I could use as well. So I headed off in search again climbing some of the tallest cliffs only to climb straight into a bee god that exploded setting me on fire. Fortunately I never died as I fell off the cliff only to see I was right next to a free pal camp. So I chose to use my well rehearsed strategy of blasting them in the face with fireballs until they were all dead. Allowing me the freedom to run up to the cage and save the bristler that was trapped inside. I continued on dodging more exploding bees, traversing the harsh terrain and picking up eggs. I really wish I had a flyer. Only to continue my journey through the night and ended up right by a massive watery serpent, the Emperor of the Sea, Jormantide. I did not want to mess with him as he was over double my level. So I had to advance carefully making my way back to the spot I found earlier to set up my pile box temporarily to fast travel home. But the free pile alliance followed me here and they were raining. 
I once more showed them who's boss with Flamio as I melted their faces off, almost setting my own 2x2 two two house on fire in the process. Good thing I missed, I guess. Wouldn't want to burn down my house. Again, anyways. So while I spent the next morning cooking up some ingots and food, imagine my surprise to see the notification of the Toko Toko squadron coming to siege my base. I egged them before they even got close. And I then set up a ranch as this structure is incredibly useful to have in your base. As certain piles with the ranching skill will come hang out here and passively generate you resources. But I wanted to get to a point where I could start breeding for piles. So I set off and found a merchant who was able to sell me a moss arena that can passively generate me the milk I needed for cakes. Then continued on where I fought the Alpha Grintail. I was going to be fighting a lot over the next few days as I desperately needed experience. But the lightning panda I ran past would likely be a bad idea for me to take on, so I just kept moving, fighting some dire howls and fox pox. Until I ended up at home, where I did need to expand my base somewhat by crafting up some more beds, and I still planned to make a new base, but to get to the location I wanted, I was going to need a flyer. So while waiting on some eggs to hatch, I headed over to Catrus, the phantasmal feline that I began to fight with my bow. Firing dozens of arrows as Flamio set her ablaze. Ulu Bunny froze her in place, and Bro Bro made her into an omelette with some explosive eggs. And I found another syndicate camp on day 33 that I was able to break into to free the flame bell hidden within, completing a whole heap of tutorial steps. Who knows? Maybe I might actually be able to do it in 100 days. I need to continue my murder spree finding another camp that had a Doomood in it that I was able to release. And now Doomood are super useful, as they have level 2 mining skill. But that wasn't the only useful thing I found, as I came up to another pile merchant who had some Toko Toko to sell, as these ones had better passive skills that I planned to use. Since the Toko Toko is actually incredibly powerful, using it to egg bomb a bunch of creatures on the beach in the morning, traveling across the oceans, climbing up cliffs as I scoured the land searching. And I spent the next morning continuing my onslaught of everything in the area. Even stronger piles that were higher level than me for quite the boost in XP. Ascending higher up the mountain, finding the next tower that I'd have to fight, but I didn't feel confident to take it on quite yet. So just dropped down off the mountain to clear out the free power alliance camp below, raining fire upon them. Allowing me to free the Dinosome Lux trapped in the center. And there were also some Mossander that I had to take down. As these were a good batch of experience, but continued moving forwards to another alliance camp, I simply bombed with my bro bros. So I could free the pal inside. But all I was doing was annoying the alliance, as they kept fighting me, so I kept taking down their camps. At least this was a good source of pals to free for experience. But the best way to level up is by taking down alphas as I entered Patalia's lair. As the final shot brought her down, pushing me almost to level 25, I headed home as my huge Verdun egg was ready to hatch, giving me a war sect, who I chose to name Hercules. Now I needed to level this thing up and the best way to do that is by fighting alphas. So I turned and headed towards my toughest challenge yet. The king of the forest, the Mamarest. Hmm.
It took an entire day of fire, sweat, and arrows to bring down the beast, but I finally did it. Pushing my Hercules from level 3 to 33 in one single step. But I had a problem. Powell has level balancing, so even though Hercules was level 33, that doesn't actually help since I was only level 26. And I had another raid coming to attack me. Thankfully though, I was able to easily egg them down. Then took off in the morning to begin the quest of leveling myself up. Taking out syndicate patrols and clearing through caves. But it was getting dark so made my way home where I leveled up my base by setting up a wheat plantation and a mill. These would be important for making cakes for breeding later. I also made sure to name any of the piles I hadn't yet been extremely creative with some of them before starting to craft an upgrade of my own. Finishing it in the morning, the musket. I also gave my piles some comfier beds as well as some more storage, but I desperately had to change base locations. So to achieve that requirement, I had a plan. As at some point I had hatched out a hangu, and after crafting up the gloves, I was able to use the hangu basically like a glider that goes up. Not entirely sure how it can fly, but it just works. Traveling through, stopping by the King Parker to take it out, and even sneaking into a syndicate camp freeing a Mal Christ, as these cats can passively generate gold coins for you at a ranch. But I needed to get to a base spot I wanted, so I fast traveled to a spot I knew was close to it to begin ascending the mountain using the hangu to pull me higher and higher, and finally arriving at the location where there were some alliance members I had to take out in order to claim this mountaintop as my own. Multiple call and ore nodes, it was perfect. So this was to be my base spot. Now it is fairly common knowledge that I am not a builder, but I wanted to try. After many grueling days of placing walls around to prevent my piles falling off, setting up new beds and way too much time building, destroying, building, chopping, crafting, spending absolutely way too much time creating a structure that was absolutely incredibly uh, mediocre at best. Listen, I'm still not a good builder. I tried. Let me know in the comments what you think of my base, but it's time to continue on with my challenge to play 100 days of Power World without catching any pals. And the next step of that is to take down the next tower boss. I started out in the morning back at my original base, as this one I planned to just have all my ranching pals here. So it'd just be an infinite source of resources, but I'll be back later to collect them. And getting home where I had some more structures to set up, like the statue of power, medicine bench, 
and a whole heap of furnaces for smelting and unlock the Giga Shield. Place down the stone and tree pit for the paths to set them up before ordering a ton of ingots to be smelted so that I could craft myself some new egg incubators, as I still was only allowed to get pals by either hatching them, breeding them, or buying them. Then had to do some chopping off my own to clear out trees for space in the base, then lay down to have a rest and end off the day. I set up some farms to be made in the morning, then hatched up another R socks. But I was still really happy with Flamio, my current R socks, but I named the new one Kaizo before heading out to search for some more scorching eggs as I was still planning to fight the next tower boss. Riding on Flamio, finding some eggs on the coast and while scorching eggs were what I wanted, I wanted the large and huge variant. I found two more scorching eggs on a rock and a statue, then found my first large in the morning of day 53. Picking up a couple of the regular size even if they weren't the size I wanted, I wasn't leaving them behind as I still didn't have a flyer. Since you can get rubies, lease punks, kelpsy, foxbox, flambell, arsox, and vanverms from them. I wanted the vanverm. I just had to get lucky. I picked up another lodge in the afternoon, and these have a chance of hatching a ragnarhawk, among a variety of others. Then took out some pyro brothers before heading off for the day. Then hatching one of the scorching eggs in the morning, I got a ruby. Now this wasn't the van verm I wanted, but ruby is actually pretty good, as in your party it will increase the attack of all fire piles by 10%. Now it is unfortunate I am only allowed to hatch one egg per day, so I spent some time collecting the resources left around my base, then headed off again in order to fight an alpha for experience, the Bron Cherry. Throwing out Flamio as I pulled out my musket and fired. The fight was on. Flamio sent out the balls of fire being highly effective versus the grassy bronze cherry. While I fired the musket shot after shot, the bronze cherry was slow as it flung its mud balls at me so I dodged to avoid them. Running away as Flamio set it ablaze, pulling him back to dodge the seed attack as it continued to launch projectiles at me. I switched to my bow for the fight to keep taking it down as the musket needed to reload. But all I needed was one final shot to defeat the Alpha Broad Cherry. With it defeated, I did find a cave nearby I was able to enter. Then using my tacos, the Toko Toko began to egg bomb the entire cave, walking through as we egged syndicate after syndicate, finally to reach the celery floating in the final chamber. A couple shots of the musket was all it took to bring it down, freeing me to grab the loot at the end. There was a shiny dire howl waiting for me outside, but with my rules I wasn't allowed to catch it, so it got blasted for experience. Then chatting to the nearby merchant where I bought another lamb ball for sale, getting closer and closer to finally beating the tutorial. Maybe by day 100 we'll be able to do it. I cleared out a nearby syndicate camp so I could free the mile crisp within to use for my ranch, then moved over to the gummos who I shot in the sap a couple times to defeat it, but moving on to the next alpha pal, Lunarus. It was a tough fight with my pals, but using tacos we managed to finish it off with just a few eggs to the head. Then fast traveled home where I hatched another R Sox. Still no Van Verum I wanted unfortunately, but that brought us to the end of the day. However, in the morning I hatched a new Scorching Egg, and this gave me a Pyron. Who I named Pyrena, as suggested by Fuzzleducks, a friend of mine who just started their channel. I also named the rest of my pals I hadn't yet, then set up some structures which actually boost the level of skills of pals in my base. I did have to throw my Lunaris Muti at my workbench to make me a set of cold resistant metal armor, and I was looking good. So I gave Muti some snacks for to finish building my new bed, and in the morning I hatched another Scorching Egg giving me a Lee's Punk Ignis that I named Billy Joe. Then spent some time harvesting a bunch of Taldium I needed to build a crusher and a mole, and I needed the crusher to grind up stone into even more Paldium so I could make a Pyron saddle. To head off and DAMN was the Pyron fast. I began to zoom around using speed in my musket to take down the Chillet and a couple of Dinosum wandering around nearby. See the partner skill for the Pyron causes my attacks from the back of it to deal fire damage. While out, I did grab a frozen egg as I need these later, then ran to begin fighting the Wampo Botan. Starting the fight on my pyre and hitting shots with my bow, before switching to send out Flamio my Arsox, fighting together in beautiful harmony as we engulf the Wampo in flames. Using my musket to deal what damage I could as my team of firepowers continued to burn the Wampo, 
Flamio was helping out a ton with its flame breath, while Rubert burnt the Wampo with tornadoes. We got it down to 1k health as I sent out Flamio to help finish it off as its seed attack crashed down on Flamio, killing it. Rest in peace, Flamio. I jumped onto Pyrena to deal the remaining couple of attacks to the Wampo in order to defeat it. But losing Flamio was a devastating blow. Yes, I had more Arsocks, but Flamio had been special. Flamio had been my main mount since we lost Pixel, and it hurt. And I got home to offer Flamio one final pet and head scratch before being forced to drive my meat cleaver down into it to kill it forever. The rest of the day, I hatched another pyron and set up some fancier foods to begin cooking, along with some extra cooking pots to have more space for cooking, and stopped by my ranching base to collect a whole heap of resources. And I had to set up some more beds for the ranch as I stopped by a pal merchant to buy another Mossarina I named Matilda. At home, I was able to hatch a Kelpsy Ignis, and this would actually be pretty strong since it stacks with my Ruby to boost my Fire Pals attacks. Before heading out to collect even more eggs, trying not to melt from the heat of the volcano, and defeating some of the locals for their fire organs. Even if it did mean I almost burnt alive. But I kept up my onslaught moving into the mountains, fighting some bronze cherry for their meat, syndicate thugs for the cativa they had trapped, and univolt for their electric organs, as I was close to entering the industrial age. But mostly it was just fun to fight through syndicate camps in order to save the dazzy they had trapped still no flyer, and still preparing to fight the next tower boss. So after finding another camp in the morning, I cleared them all out to free the Bristler, only to find another nearby and I could see a Kativa trapped inside. I didn't even bother to clear it out. Same for Flame Bell though, this time it was cause I was getting blasted as I tried to enter. But I kept moving along collecting the chest and egg, then entered a cave. It was easy to fight my way through and take out the Alpha Rip Bunny waiting peacefully at the end. With my loot, I headed out where I came across the lair of the winged tyrant, the Alpha Quivern. One of my favorite pals, but I wasn't here to catch it, I was here to take it out for its experience. But after a couple musket shots to the head, I took it down and headed home, hatched an egg to give me another Kelpsy, and ended the day. And sliding into the small settlement in the morning where I bought myself another Loot Moon. I decided it was finally time to take my batch of fire piles and head out to the snow, as it was time to fight the second tower. It was time to fight Lily and Lyleen. Throwing out Pyrena to start the fight, I dashed off to the side as I began to open fire with my musket while Pyrena charged in. But I could see her bubble attack coming as I pulled back Pyrena to dodge the bubbles before jumping on her back as a massive bubble hit me instead. We kept flinging fireball after fireball while I shot with my bow. But damage had slowed as I jumped off to fight on foot. While switching to my Rubra to send in tornadoes, Flume shooting its fireballs and Taco sending in explosive egg launchers. Slowly but surely we worked at their health pool, dodging what attacks we could, while continuing our own onslaught. Until 5 minutes were left and 20,000 health to go. Yeah. Things were looking good. So long as I don't die but my health was ticking lower. Taco's explosive eggs were dealing good damage, only to get poisoned again ticking my health lower and lower. Less than 10k left as I sent out Pyrena once again while hiding behind a pillar to block the water bubble. 2k health as I fired my musket while Pyrena charged in, defeating Lily and Lyleen. With the grassy duo defeated, I ascended to the top of the tower, where I could look out into the distance and see my next challenge. Sitting atop the volcano in the south, the next tower boss. I got home where I was able to begin planning my next team of fighters, as the next boss was a dragon electric type. So I was going to need ground and ice type piles if I had a hope of defeating it. So after selecting Hercules, Piggyloo, Dumu, Tacos and Pyrena, I did not feel confident in this team at all. So I'd have to find a way to find some stronger piles. I did hatch a bronze cherry from a large Verdon egg for the day to end. And then in the morning alongside my Lunaris crafted up a hip lantern. So at least now I could see better at night. I also crafted up a set of heat resistant metal armor. I was going to need it by the volcano. I even tested standing by the fires to see if I got hot, then headed out to see it still wasn't enough. So I was going to have to get some thermal underwear. It may have been because I was riding a literal flaming pony, but I don't think that's important. 
I eventually arrived at what's known as the fishing village where I bought some heat resistant underwear and then chatted to the pearl merchant and he had a van room for sale. Yes, I can buy a flyer. 63 days of riding on foot. Best 24,000 coins ever spent. Yes. I immediately headed home to see I needed more fire organs for the saddle. So after hunting down some pyron for the organs, tying them all together for a saddle, and naming my van verm Van Diesel, then took off into the sky flying for the very first time. I took out some nearby piles and headed into the desert where I began to fight some lease punk, taking them all out, burning them down with Van Diesel, feeling good that I could finally soar through the skies. And flying up the volcano in the morning, I did have some incineran that I had to take out, and yet again, Tacos absolutely demolished them with his explosive eggs, allowing me the freedom to continue ascending to the top, where I could claim the fast travel point, unlocking the next tower. The Brothers of the Eternal Pyre Tower. But my team was not ready yet, as I needed some stronger ground type piles. To achieve that, I headed out to the desert where I did find a huge scorching egg, the largest of eggs you can find, and I also took out some Toko Toko for experience, making sure to keep my distance even if it did get Van Diesel down to pretty low health. So in the morning, I claimed the nearest fast travel in order to head home as I had an idea. You see in Power World you can breed your piles, now it's a little more complex than just adding two together, but I'll explain it a bit more later. However, I was missing one key ingredient, I needed cake. There was a few more resources I needed like eggs and flour, thankfully I already had the milk so I wasn't going to get that, but after a couple dozen chickpeas got burnt to a crisp, and I did see the Mamma Rest is back so of course I had to take it out with Man Diesel, as it's simply a good source of experience. Finally defeating it in the morning, which thankfully went better than expected. I got home and started my R socks on his baking arc while I set up some more comfy beds for the piles in my base. But the cakes were going to take a while to cook, thus I made the most of my time by fighting some free pile alliance creeps allowing me to save the Vixie trapped inside. Since Vixie are incredibly useful, they can passively generate pile spheres. Oh, maybe they aren't that useful, not for me anyways. So instead I just chose to fight the Alpha Dran Alpha nearby, a cute pixie dragon. It took many musket shots and explosive eggs in order to finally kill it, thankfully with no casualties, so I could simply head off for the day. Though I did stop by a cave along my journey, as there can be good loot found inside, even if it did require me to fight a Catrus first in order to get to it. Then continued my ascent up into the frostbound mountains, melting some rain tricks that got in my way, and headed home to hatching my first frozen egg, giving me a chillet, a very cute ice ferret pile that I named Chili. Then grabbed the one cake that was finished baking as I had some pals to start breeding. Heading out to my ranching base where I built up the breeding farm. So here's a quick breakdown of how breeding works. Every pile has a hidden value. And when you breed those two pals, those values get added together and divided by two in order to give you a brand new pile. For me, I wanted an Anubis. So I could use a Rush Shaw and Blazer Moon, but I had no Blazer Moon. Or an Ike the Adir and a Beacon, but I didn't have a Beacon. So I had to find some combination of powers that would give me an Anubis. I could use a Lunaris and Suzaku, since I did have that huge Scorch Egg, which has a 50% chance of giving me a Suzaku or a Blaze Howl Knocked. But that's when I saw I could use a Pyron and an Arasox, both of which I already had. And it was then day 68, so close to perfect timing, when I threw my Arasox and Pyron into the breeding farm before running and hiding in the hay bales where I could watch as they got down and dirty. Until finally out popped a huge rocky egg. Once I had it in the incubator for it to start preparing to hatch, I learned the engrams for new furnace which should help smelt some ingots a bit faster. I just needed to plan where I was going to put it, so that meant some more building. Completing it in the morning when I saw my huge scorching egg was ready to hatch, giving me a Suzaku. This is an amazing flyer. I named it Suzuki, and I couldn't use it as a fly as I wasn't a high enough level for the saddle, so at least I had that to look forward to. I did also want to increase my base level, so I built up a power generator and a spear line conveyor belt. Not that useful. So I destroyed it immediately to set up a weapon conveyor belt to end off day 69. And since I was waiting for my rocky egg to hatch, I did hatch an electric egg which gave me a jolt hog. Since in my challenge rules I still can only hatch one egg per day, 
and I didn't want to waste a day waiting for the huge rocky egg. Then set off to fight some alphas to keep leveling my ground team, taking out the Azurabi with some explosive eggs, since Tacos was still just incredibly powerful, definitely becoming one of my favorite pile skills. I also cleared a syndicate camp so I could get my first tansy, then found a cave. There were a few thugs waiting inside, one of which I snapped with my musket and the other didn't even notice. I guess he thought it must have been the wind. The rest of the cave was a breeze though, including taking out the woolly pop at the end. A sheep made of cotton candy. But I was making my way towards another alpha, the bronze cherry aqua. Opening fire with my musket and tacos. And we were dealing some serious damage, but then... Tacos got hit with a seed mine that absolutely obliterated his health, killing off tacos. What? No! We managed to defeat the broad cherry, but having lost tacos was devastating. I now had to just head home where I did find a large common egg right before I got to the fast travel point to allow me to travel back home. So with the clear inventory, I chose to set out and continue my quest of fighting alphas for experience. Taking down Beacon with my Hercules, as well as the Relaxorus Lux. Then Dumu put out Fushi's flames with its bubble blast so Hercules could charge through the Univolt as I blasted the Mosanda Lux with my musket. We were building a great team, but I needed more ground type pals. So I flew off into the desert in the morning, arriving at the dune shelter where I could sell off a ton of my jewels and bought a Robin Quill Terra even stopping by the black marketeer hiding at the bottom of a cave, and I did at least find one egg here, a large verdant egg. So I just headed home as my huge rocky egg had finished incubating, hatching into my very first Anubis. It got shockingly bad passive skills, like pacifist and downtrodden. Great. So I named it Anubis. Fortunately, I still had my pals breeding at the farm so I could hatch a second one, and this was much better, so I named it Anubis. Now though, I was going to have to level it up. Thankfully, I found a cave I was able to just fight and melt my way through to finally take out the Gobfin at the end. And the nearest alpha was then the Elizabeth, who thankfully using the power of flight, was able to just melt it with Van Diesel. Then moved on to take out the war sect as well in order to end off the day. And I came across a free pile camp in the morning that I was able to obliterate in order to free the t fans trapped inside. Before making my way to take down Bailet as the final burst of experience to bring Anubis up to my level. I did also stop by the pile merchants where I was able to buy another Lambo, putting me at 3 out of 5 in order to complete the tutorial. So close, yet so far. So I kept exploring, making my way into the desert, finding a couple syndicate camps to free myself another Arsox and another Dumud. Even if some Toko Toko and syndicates got mad at me while flying around. But that's when I saw the Alpha Anubis and he was trapped in the trees. Now Anubis is incredibly powerful, so it took my moment to begin trying to take him out. But I didn't quite expect him to break free and one shot Van Diesel killing him instantly. I had to sprint away and escape. A Lavanda did try and catch me but my musket solved that problem. And it took plenty of running, climbing and jumping to finally make it back to a fast travel point where I was able to head home but I had just lost my only fly up. I did have Suzuki but without a saddle I was going to need more experience. I did also still have tacos, my toko toko that had died, and it was about time that I had to deal with it. And I woke up in the morning of day 78, feeling a bit saddened, having lost so many important teams, but I couldn't let that worry me now. I still had a challenge to complete, doing some shiny hunting with my musket, then stop by my old base spot from my first 100 days as I was on my way to the Pen King's Lair. It was as easy as 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And Verdash fell just as quickly thanks to Suzuki burning it to a crisp. But I was running out of ammo for my musket. So I stopped by the fisherman's village to buy some bullets and checked out the power merchant to see he had a pyron that had the swift attribute. So this would be incredibly speedy as Swift gives a bonus 30% movement speed. With my new Pyron, I headed over to the Frostbound Mountains, and damn was this fire pony fast, allowing me to easily take down some chillets. 
And I also wanted to level up my base some more. So I had set up a new hot spring. But to go higher, I needed an improved furnace. I need to be short of the fire organs I needed. So I was off to the volcano where I began to snipe and explode everything I could. And also found a deep cavern and hidden at the end was the alpha blazamut. I was not ready for that yet. So I simply continued my quest for organs, defeating what I could with Purette, my swift pyron. Collecting a large scorching egg and exploding some more pyron soldiers. Turns out fire is pretty effective versus flamethrowers that use gas tanks. But then in the morning of day 80, as I continued along the coast, I found quite a large group of Pyre brothers. So I blew them apart as nearby I found a huge dragon egg. This was exciting, as I could either get a Relaxaurus or a Yormantide Ignis from it. Two very powerful pals, as well as a huge scorching egg. So as I was running, I found another huge dragon egg. You know, maybe I could build a powerful team. So when I got home, I hatched out a Robin for Terra to have a spot for my huge dragon egg. And since I at least now had the fire organs I needed, I set up some of the improved furnace to begin smelting some refined ingots, leveling up my power box and unlocking the refined metal armor to end off the day. I wanted to make some refined ingots in the morning so that I could make some new armor. But for that, I needed coal. Lots of coal. This is why I built my base here though, as I have coal on my front step. I also made myself a better pickaxe to be crafted, and damn was this way better. Smashing some nodes very quickly, before heading over to set up some new pile beds in order to level up my base. I was then running through the desert where I did blast down some toko toko as I was on my way to fight some new alphas. Defeating the syndicates who were trying to stop me until I arrived at the mine shaft, as hidden at the bottom was the very cute Dinosum Lux. But since I was already building my team around defeating electric piles, so safe to say, this electric dinosaur got grounded. Okay, yes, that joke was bad. I'm sorry. Please like the video. I was on my way out of the desert when I came across Necromus and Palladius, two very powerful legendary piles. No chance I would even be able to touch them. So I just ran off into the desert where I did have to fight off some lavanders and noticed that they dropped mushrooms. Not sure if that's an innuendo for something, but I would not be surprised. But I wanted to explore some new lands, find some new alphas to fight, so I was running through the ocean trying to find a way up the cliff since I didn't actually have a flyer right now, only to glitch and fall under the ocean. I guess this counts as new lands? But I climbed up and out to continue onwards, finding a pathway up to begin my explorations into the lands jumping through a large abandoned city until finally I came over the mountain, entering the icy cold north. I did find Lali knocked in a frozen mineshaft, but with nothing effective for us dark types, I chose to just leave her for now. But it was pretty cold, so I traveled over to some warmer climates, where I collected myself some Mamoress steak, took out a Felbat Alpha, and freed a Kativa from a raid camp. But that's when I found another camp. And this one had a pal I desperately wanted. It had another lamb ball. I was able to free, so only one more to go to complete the tutorial. I did then stop by the Relaxaurus Lux, who I defeated for the experience, before making the decision to head home as my huge dragon egg was ready to hatch, giving me a Yorman Tide Ignis. Yes, this was an incredibly powerful fire pal that I chose to name Yorman Gondo after the Great World Serpent. And I was thankful to hatch a second one in the morning, but at least now I'd have one for my base to smelt ingots and bake cakes. This one I named Hephaestus, then immediately put it to work while I headed out to keep up the grind for experience, killing Beacon, Mossander Lux, and enacting my revenge against Wampo Botan. Being unable to capture piles sure does make it take a while to level up. And now I did see the Alpha Yormantide, no chance I was touching that yet. Warsect, however, he got burnt to a crisp. Even the Alpha Mamoress got burnt like it was nothing. And I kept fighting Alphas into day 88, even if I did almost die and lose every pile on my team, until finally getting to level 40 so I could unlock the Suzaku saddle and the heat resistant refined metal armor, both of which I was going to need to take on the next tower boss, and both of which was going to need a lot of ore to craft. So I spent some time whacking nodes with my pickaxe so that my moop could begin crafting the Suzaku saddle and taking off in the morning to begin fighting wild piles in the area. 
taking out Veilette as the final act for the day. But it was finally day 90. 10 days to go. Three more towers to bring down. Safe to say, the odds are not in my favor. So I collected some refined ingots and palladium that I had grinded down from stone. All to craft the set of refined metal armor I wanted, including the refined metal helmet, before grabbing one of my skill fruits, the fireball. Which I fed to my Suzuki, then checked to see what level I needed for my next weapon. And that was the pump action shotgun at level 42. So I guess that means my battle for experience was not over yet. Good thing the Alpha Mamorist is made of grass and fires pretty effective versus that. I was doing my last minute preparations for the next tower boss, stopping by the Seabreeze Church where I imbued some of my pals with pal souls, giving them quite a large boost in attack damage, before traveling over to the Brothers of the Eternal Pyre Tower. As here, I was to face off against Axel and Orser. I threw out Anubis to open the battle while I fired with my musket. 10 minutes, 130,000 health, this was it. Anubis jumped to deal a devastating air slam, so I switched him out for Hercules to charge in to damage Axel. We kept fighting as I threw out Oliver, who was able to fire an incredibly strong grass laser. While I kept running to dodge Orsirk's acid rain, I brought Anubis back out, who was by far my most powerful fighter, thanks to his powerful rock lance. But I had to keep switching out my pals, sending out Hercules, Oliver, and Anubis. Attack after attack, shot after shot. Orsirk shooting massive dark blasts while I kept my distance. He was down to 63,000 health as the timer passed halfway. Barely ahead of the damage we needed, but it was going to be close. That just meant we had to keep fighting. My musket firing shot after shot while Oliver shot his bow. Hercules flung his boulders and Anubis slammed down from the sky. Damage was going good, thanks to all my pals, but if I ever died, we would lose. Shot after shot, Orsirk's health grew lower as the two minute mark hit. But then I got absolutely blasted by his lightning bolt, bringing me down to 1000 health. Another hit like that and I would be dead. So I ran far off, switching out my pals. Only 30 seconds remained as Anubis came back out, charging and dealing massive damage before leaping up into the sky to smash down on Orsirk, winning the fight with only 20 seconds to spare. I was able to ascend to the top of the tower, gaze out into the distance, seeing the next tower far off in the desert as the day came to an end, while I flew off on Suzuki out of the volcano. I just had one major problem. The next boss was fire. So I had to build an entirely new team from scratch in as few days as possible. So to do that, I threw my Suzuki and Anubis into the breeding farm, only for a massive herd of wild pals to siege the base. The damage was devastating. Five of the pals I had here all killed in the attack, but I had no time to grieve, as when I got home, I set up a damp egg to begin hatching. Then headed out where I just literally ran through an absolute mass of piles, farming food to sustain my team. Until I got home in the morning to see the eggs had been laid, and these were huge dragon eggs. As breeding as Suzaku and Anubis give you a pile that is similar to one I already had. But the eggs needed to start incubating. Well, I started breeding my Jormungandr and Voltage in order to get another powerful pile. And I also hatched a pen king in the morning from one of my large damp eggs, then headed out to continue doing some experience farming as I still wanted that pump action shotgun. Completing the grind on day 95 where I set up a refined metal chest in order to level up my base before having my pals begin to craft the pump action shotgun. Stopping by the fishing village to purchase some ammo so I could head off and test it. With the catrus dead, I got home to see my eggs were ready to hatch, giving me a Jormantide. But this was the water version. While in the morning, I could hatch an Azura Bee. I immediately got my Jormantide to help me make some palladium. I needed to craft the saddles for both, before heading out to take on the Alpha Suzaku in order to level them up.
we finally managed to extinguish the Suzaku, leveling my team all the way up to level 42. But that wasn't going to be enough. I needed to fight something bigger, something stronger. I needed to head back to the volcanic mountain as I needed to defeat the Alpha Blazemont. Let's do this. It took many hits and way too many close calls to finally defeat the massive beast, but this was it. I was basically out of time to continue preparing. So I stopped by the small settlement one final time and saw they had another lamb ball for sale. That was five out of five. All I had left to do to complete the tutorial was craft a pal sphere. I mean, I'm not going to complete the tutorial. But I think that's pretty damn impressive, so make sure you leave a like if you agree with me. But I couldn't worry about that now as I headed out to the desert in order to enter the next tower. As here was Marcus and his fire. So all five of my pals were now lost. I woke up in my base with no items, no team, and no time to change the outcome. So as I lay down in my base while the clock ticked over to end day 100, I want to say thank you to all my patrons who have continued to support me and my content, and I hope you enjoy this next video. 